Welcome back to your how to log into a website tutorial. That sounds really dumb, but seriously, we have to worry about these things. Um, here's mine, the Doje Dojo, where you can find all your favorite pictures of your favorite dogs, because, you know, that's important. Um, so last time we were here, we got this working so that when a user signs in with their Google account, it will, in the console, display their name which is pretty cool. But now what we need to do is we need to actually change the what's on the screen and, and do something when the user logs in, because otherwise our website's pretty boring. So what I've done in the meantime is I have created um, a little bit of a welcome you know, page, just some content to display. It's just some text, a picture, and a, a bootstrap drop down with some options on it, because I want to allow the user to select their favorite dogs uh, for, for later. Um, so I would suggest that before you continue this video, you know, have this in mind. What do you want to do as far as when the user logs in? Um, you do need to have that ready to go. Um, don't you, you know, use whatever you're going to have. If you really want to use mine, go ahead. But this is not the important part of this video. Um, you'll notice that I gave an ID to this uh, container called welcome. Um, that's kind of important. I'm actually going to give an ID to the first thing called login so that uh, we can hide it once the user's logged in. Finally, the JavaScript, I have, you know, your standard document dot ready, and I've hidden the welcome div when they, when they uh, first arrive on the scene so that we can make sure the user logs in. All right, but other than that, nothing's changed. So here's where we're logging the user's display name. Um, here's where we need to do something different, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, and we're actually, see this local user variable? We're actually going to make this a global variable. I'm going to say variable user is nothing right now. And then we want to store the uh, user in our program for access later once they're logged in. So now we can access user throughout the application. That's important because what we need to do is we need to write two things. First, we need to show our welcome dialog uh, once the user is logged in. Then we need to populate the welcome dialog uh, as well. So how do we do that? When they log in, we're going to set user equal to re result.user. And then we're going to do we're going to hide the main container. Oops, it's not main, it's called login. We're going to hide the login container. And we're going to show the welcome container. Okay. Now, we can make this a little bit more efficient by just creating a function that says show welcome. And take this code and put it into that function. That might make our lives a little bit easier in case we need to do this again later. All right, so login is hidden, welcome is shown. And I also have this little bit of text in here. Let's see, welcome text. Just a little message that I want it to say. So we're going to populate that. Welcome text.html. And that's going to say hello. And then we're going to add the value of user.displayName. Now, if you forget the syntax for the properties of users, you can check the uh, documentation for Firebase. For example, reference, we go to web, I go to the user object, and here's all their properties. So the user's display name uh, you can get. We're going to need some of this in a second, so I'm going to leave it here. All right. We're just going to show and display uh, their, their display name. Um, all right, so that's cool. Now, I also have this drop down here, so I'm, I, I have a little bit of, a, of an, an issue because that drop down menu doesn't actually do anything right now. So, what we need to do is we need to get uh, the value of uh, the drop down when the user clicks it. Uh, it's a bootstrap drop down. Um, so, if we go to the W3Schools reference uh, for bootstrap drop downs, they actually show you exactly how to do this, kind of at the bottom. Um, where is it? Oh, to the whole reference. Yeah. So if you go down here, see where it says this? This will actually allow you to see on your bootstrap dropdown what the value of the link clicked on. But you do have to change this because show.bs.dropdown means when it's shown, but we actually want to do it when it's about to hide. Um, and again, this is just specifically for mine, so that the thing can do something. Um, 
Okay, so we're we're assuming this is working. I'm not testing it yet. Should I test it? Let's test it. I'm going to pause and upload to GitHub. You should do the same thing. Make sure it's displaying your welcome dialog uh, as you've desired before we do the next step. I'm going to pause it to upload. Code has been uploaded now. Let's go ahead and test it out. We'll close this. Sign in with Google. Click my account. All right. Uh, looks like our welcome text didn't get populated, but it did show the dialogue correctly. I wonder if there was some sort of error with the welcome text. There was not. Welcome text.html. ID welcome text. Interesting. Huh. I wonder why that's happening. Did I spell welcome text wrong? Weklum. Yeah, well, weklum is not a word, so, you know, there's that. All right, we're going to assume that's going to work before we... <laughs> anyway, so here's uh, the drop-down. This is what we need to do uh, next. So the drop-down right now, um, all it does is set the text variable to be this. But I want to store this in my database. So remember, we logged in with Google, so we don't really have access to modify Google's database. But what we can do is we can create our own database using Firebase, of course, like we did in video two. Um, and we can create a user's node in our database and populate that with additional information like their favorite dogs. So we're already kind of set up to do this. For example, our initialization code um, already loads everything we need. Um, so we can actually kind of get started. All right, so let's see. Last project, we were pushing values, but in this case, we don't really want to push because we don't want to reset the user. You know, we don't want to keep adding uh, endpoints onto the user's node if they uh, update their favorite dogs. We just want to update that user's, that particular user's um, information. So the way that we do that is with a different command called set, which let's go ahead and... Uh, look at our documentation here. Uh, we're looking at real-time database, save data, which is a little bit different. Um, so right here is the command to set information, which if it's not there, it creates it, but if it is there, it updates it, which is kind of exactly what we want. So firebase.database.ref users slash user ID. We actually do have to change this because we need to have some identifier uh, for our user object that we signed in with. So this probably needs to be user dot something. Let's go ahead and see what we can get from the user object from our uh, reference here. Let's see. Display name. Should we have it by email? We could have it by email. No, you don't want that to be a key. That's kind of bad. Um, let's have it be the uh, user's unique ID, I guess. Or maybe it could just be their Google to No, let's have it be UID. All right, so user.uid is the key for that user. All right, so we need to set the username is equal to, again, we want to get the uh, information off of this user object. So we'll change this to like uh, name could be user.displayName. And then email could be user.email. And then we also want to update it with our custom information here, like favorite dog is text. This is how you get the value of the uh, thing in the drop down that's been clicked in this particular case. Um, again, this will be different for everybody. But the point is, here's the, here's the fields in the user object that you want to update. Um, and you can have as many ridiculous things in here, like you know favorite color on Wednesday, whatever you want. doesn't matter. Um, just make it relevant to whatever product you're building. And that's actually it. That's all you have to do. Isn't that fun? OK, um, does this work? I have absolutely no idea. But let's go ahead and see. Um, I think I want my user's database to be a capital U. Yeah, why not? OK, I'm going to upload these. I'm going to pause and upload to GitHub again. Let's see if the code is current. It is. Let's see what happens. So we're going to sign in with Google. Here's me. OK, so all good. Let's see if the drop down works. Any errors? Doesn't look like any errors. So let's go to our Firebase. And oh, look at that. So we have a user's node. Here's my UID. 
email favorite dog and that slash n might be problematic but we can fix that cool alright so we really don't want this to if I do this again we don't want a new user to be created let's just make sure that doesn't happen so I'll click this a bunch of times if it creates like six users we know we did something wrong alright sure enough uh, Sure enough, it has not actually done anything because the information is the same. Um, and it hasn't uh, created new users, so that's good. Notice this thing really here. Default security rules require users to be authenticated. Last project, we allowed anybody to read and write. But in this project, because we're already using the authentication features um, in Firebase, this is actually working automatically for us. Firebase knows that this user is authenticated, so it allows them to write. You'll notice we didn't have to do that step this time. That's pretty much fantastic. Um, so this will allow it so that you can't actually do anything on the site without being an authenticated user. Super duper. Neato gang. Alright, so at this point in the project you should be able to log in, display some sort of dialogue, and have some sort of UI on your page that maybe updates your custom database um, based on that information, um, which we need to do. Uh, this continues to add spaces, which is annoying, but whatever. Um, the next part is going to be involving uploading content to your site. So make sure that you build out your profile page a little bit and what you want. You know, you have a good idea of what you want your site to do and things like that. Uh, and then come back for the next video. But until then, I hope you've enjoyed this doofy picture of this dog and how to log into a Firebase uh, system. And um, yeah, that's it. Have a, have a good time. Have fun. Fun is good. Bye-bye.